Welcome to Searching the Scriptures. Our Bible teacher will be Gunther von Haringa Sr. So without further ado, let's look into God's Word, the Bible. Good evening and welcome to Searching the Scriptures. This is going to be Psalm 110, uh, part 33. And this was originally recorded on March 29th, 2015. I'm going to also read Psalm 110. A Psalm of David. Jehovah said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Jehovah shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. Jehovah hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Jehovah at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore shall he lift up the head." We've been looking at the first part of the last verse in Psalm 110, which states, He shall drink of the brook in the way, therefore shall he lift up the head. And we've also taken a detour since the two Hebrew words, He shall drink, which is Strong's 8354, and of the brook, 5158, in Psalm 110.7, only appear together three other times in the Old Testament, twice in 1 Kings 17, 4 and 6, which spiritually is, typify, is typified by the first 2300 days of the Great Tribulation, in which virtually nobody was saved. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. And the ravens brought him, this would be Elijah, bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. The period of time is aptly referred to as a spiritual drought or famine, according to the following passages, and is characterized by three and a half years or 42 months, as we learn from these next references. Uh, during Elijah's day, the three and a half years or 42 months were a literal period of time. We read in Luke 4:25, but I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, which is the Greek rendering of the Hebrew Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, or 42 months, which is representative of the uh, great tribulation of our day, which lasted 23 years or 8,400 days. And it was during these first 2,300 days of this period that virtually nobody was saved, hence the figure of heaven being shut up. I'll read the verse again. But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. Uh, James 5, 17 through 18 likewise reveals Elias, was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. 
and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Also, we can go to Revelation 11, 2. Revelation 11, 2. And there we read, But the court which is without or outside the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. The Great Tribulation in its entirety is also characterized by the spiritual number 42 months, whereas the entire church age is referred to by the spiritual number 1260 days. The three and a half days, on the other hand, is another spiritual number that refers to only the first part of the Great Tribulation or the first 2300 literal days as Revelation 11, 9 and 11 point out, which commenced on May 21, 1988, in which the true believers in the congregation were driven out or silenced or killed spiritually. Then beginning on September 6, 1994, the third period of spiritual rain began to bring in the final harvest of souls, bringing God's salvation program to an end on May 21, 2011. I'll read Revelation 11, 9, and 11. And after three days and a half, the Spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer or allow their dead bodies to be put in graves. Elijah is also in view in 2 Kings 3.17, which parallels the second part of the Great Tribulation. It was during this time, as I mentioned, that God saved a great multitude of people from all over the world during that significant spiritual season known as the latter rain. For thus saith Jehovah, ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain, yet that valley shall be filled with water that ye may drink, both ye and your cattle and your beasts. Again, referring to the fact that this is a spiritual rain uh, because we can't see salvation taking place in a person's soul, and yet God indicates that there would be a great number that would be saved. And we can think about the great catch of fish in John 21. Uh, which also uh, speaks to this time. Uh, and uh, that great, in spite of the great catch of fish, the net did not break. And they were all brought to shore, brought uh, safely into the kingdom of God. Also, if we go to Revelation 7, 9, and verses 13 to 14, we find additional confirmation of this. And after this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now, the last time I, I uh, spoke, 
we spent some time looking at the individual words in Song of Solomon 5.11 to try to grasp the significance of the ravens, who are unclean birds, supplying Elijah with bread and flesh in the morning and evening. Uh, I'll read that again. His head is as the most fine gold. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. And this word uh, head uh, refers to the fact that, that and it's speaking in, in the in Song of Solomon, uh, it's referring to Christ, who is the head of the eternal church. And the word for gold is, is used only in Isaiah 13, 12, where it says to make a man more precious or rare than gold. Uh, speaking about our time right now, uh, because Christ is not to be found in the sense that he is no longer saving. Uh, during this time, during this day of judgment, his locks are bushy and black as a raven. Uh, again, the only other usage uh, is in Song of Solomon 5, 2, uh, with the locks uh, referring to dew or doctrine. And the word bushy is the word eminent uh, and black as a raven. We also have to keep in mind that 1 Kings 17 corresponds spiritually to judgment beginning at the house of God and virtually nobody being saved, uh, which is um, one reason why Elijah, whose name means Jehovah is my God, is in hiding. Now let's look at this uh, phrase, black as a raven. Um, I said that we would look more closely uh, at the word black uh, referring to Christ's locks. Again, <clears throat> excuse me, having to do with doctrine in the phrase and black as a raven, since it's the opposite description of what we find, for example, in a passage like uh, Revelation 1.14. Uh, and let me uh, read that just to get the context. Uh, of that verse. So Revelation 1, and let's see. I actually didn't write this down, um, so I don't want to misquote it. Uh, the rest of the passage, that, that is. Um, let's see. Yeah, let me start with uh, verse 12, and I'll read down to verse 18. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool and as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen and have the keys of hell and of death. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, again, this is an opposite description to 
uh, what we find black as a raven here in uh, 1 uh, Kings 17. The word black can symbolize judgment depending on the context. Uh, for example, the identically spelled root word for black is Strong's number 7838. Uh, and it only surfaces in Job 3030 in which Job is a figure or type of Christ undergoing the wrath of God. Uh, let me again get the, the context for that in Job 30. Let's see. Um, Yeah, I'll start with um, 30. Well, hmm. let, let me start with verse 15. Terrors are turned upon me. They pursue my soul as the wind, and my welfare passeth away as a cloud. And now my soul is poured out upon me. The days of affliction have taken hold upon me. My bones are pierced in me in the night season, and my sinews take no rest. By the great force of my disease is my garment changed. It bindeth me about as the collar of my coat. He hath cast me into the mire, and I am become like dust and ashes. I cry unto thee, and thou dost not hear me. I stand up, and thou regardest me not. Thou art become cruel to me. With thy strong hand thou opposest thyself against me. Thou liftest me up to the wind. Thou causest me to ride upon it, and dissolvest my substance. <clears throat> Excuse me. For I know that thou wilt bring me to death and to the house appointed for all living. Howbeit he will not stretch out his hand to the grave, though they cry in his destruction. Did not I weep for him that was in trouble? Was not my soul grieved for the poor? When I looked for good, then evil came unto me. And when I waited for light, there came darkness. My bowels boiled and rested not. The days of affliction prevented me or preceded me. I went mourning without the sun. I stood up and I cried in the congregation. I am a brother to dragons and a companion to owls. My skin is black upon me and my bones are burned with heat. My harp also is turned to mourning, and my organ into the voice of them that weep. <clears throat> this word black, <clears throat> which is the uh, root word uh, for black in 1 Kings 17, is 7835, and uh, the, the word our bone, burn having to do with the bones is Strong's number 2787. The uh, Hebrew, uh, this Hebrew term, are burned, in this same verse is also found uh, in a few other citations. And again, it highlights the wrath of God upon Christ. Uh, you'll also notice that in Job 30, it talks about uh, his soul being uh, poured out or poured out upon his soul. Uh, this also ties into Proverbs 8, uh, where we read the same kind of language, and that word um, uh, poured out has to do with being melted or molten. Uh, it's it's uh, language having to do with destruction, with a complete melting. And so we can understand this that prior to the foundation of the world, Christ was melted. He, was, he had to die, 
having become sin, he had to die, and then he had to be annihilated for the sins of his people. But wonderfully, because he is eternal God and he's greater than death, greater than annihilation, he does not remain in that state. Uh, that was a state of corruption. Uh, that is why, uh, you know, we read of the demonstration in 33 AD, it said that Christ's body did not corrupt uh, at that time. The reason it did not corrupt is because he was not bearing, he wasn't paying for sins at that point, but it did corrupt uh, at the foundation of the world because there at that time, he was atoning for sins and that is the payment for sin. It is, it is corruption, it is death, it is annihilation but he did not remain in that state. He overcame that because he is eternal God. Um, okay, let's then look at some of these other passages which, which highlight the wrath of God uh, upon Christ and also our present day of judgment that we're living in uh, as um, we uh, look at these verses, uh, Psalm 69, uh, verse 3. Uh, again, let me, let me get the context of that as well, too. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, let me, I'll start with verse 1. To the chief musician upon Shoshanim, a psalm of David, save me, O God, for the waters are come in unto my soul. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary of my crying, my throat is dried. Mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. And uh, this again is <clears throat> similar language to what we find also in, um, let's see, in Jonah. Uh, Jonah 2, which speaks about Christ in the belly of hell, the belly of the whale, or the womb of, the, of, of hell, or the womb of the, uh, of the, of the whale. Um, let's see. If I can find that, yeah, let's see. Um, uh, I'll start with Jonah 2, 1. Then Jonah prayed unto Jehovah his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto Jehovah. And he heard me out of the belly or womb of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Now notice the similarity here with the language uh, of uh, water and, and uh, waves going over him. For thou hast, hadst cast me into the deep in the midst of the seas. And, and again, the sea itself is a picture of hell. And the floods compassed me about all thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight Yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compass me about, even to the soul. The depth clothes me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption." O Jehovah my God, when my soul fainted within me, <clears throat> excuse me, I remembered Jehovah, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that I have vowed. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm just going to get some water. <clears throat> Salvation is of the Lord, of Jehovah. 
<clears throat> and Jehovah spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Also, if we go, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> if we go to Psalm 102, um, we also find a language there that um, has to do with bones being burned. Um, Psalm 102, let's see. Yeah, I'll start with verse 1, go down to verse 3. Hear my prayer, O Jehovah, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me in the day when I call, answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as an hearth. My heart is smitten and withered like grass, so, so that I forget to eat my bread. I'll go down to verse 5. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. Also, uh, in Isaiah 24, 6, we can go there, and we see this same word, uh, bones or burned, uh, in Psalm 102, 3, and also in Psalm 69, 3, it was rendered there as, is dried, my throat is dried. This is the same word as burned. Uh, let's see, Isaiah. <clears throat> 24 um, let me start with verse uh, 1 I'll go down to verse 6 and again this is a chapter that has to do with the judgment of uh, our day and uh, it, it's just very very clear Behold, Jehovah maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower. As with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for Jehovah hath spoken this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away, the world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. <clears throat> Excuse me. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned. That's our word, 2787, and few men left. Now, in spite of the fact that 1 Kings 17 is set in the spiritual context of the first 2300 days of the Great Tribulation, Elijah, as a true believer, is still sustained by God physically as God sent the ravens to meet his physical needs. And we can also understand the raven to emphasize the environment of judgment in which Elijah, representing the word of God, had been hiding by the brook Cherith. And, and Cherith is, is, a, is a name, it means to be cut off. And it's adjacent to the Jordan River. And the Jordan River itself is another representation of hell or the grave. Remember too that eventually the brook Cherith dries up because there had not been any rain, which further underscores the drastic uh, dearth uh, or, or void 
of the gospel during this time, which would remain uh, that way until the latter reign would commence again in 1994. Thank you for joining us today for Searching the Scriptures. Until next time, to God be the glory.